Today we're not playing computer games, but today we're taking pictures of the night sky. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Down to Earth Astronomy. Astrophotography and astronomy in general is probably the biggest passion in my life and I really enjoy taking pictures of the night sky whenever I get the opportunity. However, I feel like there's a lot of people who have the feeling that you're going to need a lot of big and expensive equipment in order to take good pictures. What I'm going to show you today is the, what you can do with very minimal amounts of equipment and a lot of it you might already have at home. And later on in the video I'm going to show you a post-processing method, it's called lucky imaging, that is sometimes used to reduce the amount of blur in an image that could be induced by the atmosphere. So I want to show you some quick pictures here. The first one I took was actually from um, a recent uh, vacation I was on and uh, it was almost a full moon. So I decided to try and, and snap some, uh, some quick pictures. And the picture we see here is of the moon. And this is on, on my phone, just my like, phone um, on full auto. And what you can see the phone is doing here is it's trying to make sure that the um, that as big as part of the image gets uh, as much light as possible, which of course means because the night sky is fairly um, um, fairly dark and we have this bright moon in the middle, it is doing a horrible, horrible overexposure of the image. We see we get a lot of grains in the night sky, it doesn't really look black, and the moon is just a big shiny ball and is completely overexposed. My phone has a mode with which they call Pro, which it's basically lets you adjust this, uh, the exposure time manually and other things you can control more manually. So I switched it over. Um, I'm pretty sure you can find camera apps that will allow you to do this as well. But I basically just switched it over so I could control the exposure manually, which left me with a picture like this of the moon. Now it's a lot better. We can see the night sky is now actually black. Um, the moon is not overexposed. We can begin to see some structures on it. But it, it's not great, but it's a definite improvement just by doing a little bit of manual control of, of your exposure. So, of course, you could um, start with this. Um, and, and again, this is just what you're going to get from a normal phone. Now, of course, a, a, a normal phone is not really meant to take pictures like this. So you probably have to, uh, to up your gear a little bit. The next image I want to show you is taken with my now pretty old um, DSLR camera. I have a uh, Canon 550D and this picture was just taken with the normal kit lens. That's the, like, the cheap lens that comes with the camera. Um, I think it's a maximum of 55 millimeters. The zoom is, is, not, uh, is not great as you can see, them. but we can, we can now begin. Again, we do some manual control of the, um, of the exposure. We get that optical zoom that allows us to capture more details, and we can see now we're actually beginning to see some some more structures. As I said, this was not taken on the vacation. That's why it's a different moon face. Um, I personally like this is just a tip. If you take pictures of the moon, a lot of people will say, "Oh, we need to go out doing the full moon." I actually like it much better in a half moon like this because, as we'll see in some of the later pictures, the I think that the day-night terminator on the moon it looks very good in uh, in pictures of the end of the moon. So I I always try to take it not doing a full moon. Um, but yeah, we can see definite definite a, a improvement. Now there's a good chance that you might already have a camera like this. Might not be the exact camera, but something very similar that you will be able to uh, get equal performance to. And what you can then do is you could also go out and have, let's say you have a zoom lens. Now I have a 200 millimeter um, optical zoom lens for, for the camera, as you can see here. And putting that on, um, we can see we get something that's a lot better now, because of course we're going to get that um, bigger zoom and we actually begin to get something that looks half decent. And remember that this is just equipment that you could easily carry with you in your back. There's no reason to, if you're just taking pictures of, um, of versus the moon and many other objects, exactly, you don't need a big, huge, expensive telescope. You can do it with a 
can a camera a decent camera and a decent lens and that's pretty much it i know that now we're moving into expensive uh, equipment category because camera equipment is expensive but again if you're already into photography and you um and you have the equipment already you can actually go out and take pictures like this um but now i want to show you that technique that i talked about the method i want to show you is called lucky imaging um, it's one of my favorite post-processing um, methods for astrophotography and it revolves around being lucky. <laughs> Basically what you do is you set up your shot. For instance, you can see here with my zoom lens, I've taken a total of 417 images and they're pretty much the same. We have one of them here, uh, which we looked at before and all the pictures are pretty much the same. If we open the next one, you can see it's, it's almost the same. So what I did was I put the camera up on a tripod, pointed at the moon, full zoom. I took a few test images just to make sure that the exposure was correct and uh, everything was in focus. And then I just set the camera to full burst mode and just let it run for a couple of minutes. So it would just take picture after picture after picture, just quickly after, one after the other. And the reason why you do this is because when you take an image through the atmosphere, the atmosphere will like mirage a little and it will distort and it will blur out the image. Um, and, and sometimes you will be lucky and your image will be very sharp and in focus and other times you'll be unlucky and it will be slightly blurred and out of focus. Um, so therefore, I, uh, I did it like this, where I took a ton of pictures and we're now going to try to stack these images on top of each other. We're first going to do a, um, a quality analysis for all the pictures and then we're going to stack them on top of each other to try and reduce that blur. And to do that, I love to use a program called AVI Stack. It's a small standalone piece of software. It's run on a, on a piece of software called uh, IDL, which is a program language developed mainly for astrophotography. Um, and what you do here is we go in and we go and open, let's say, and there's not going not to be a full guide on this because it's a quite complicated piece of software. Let's take a lot of zoom images like that. Um, so I'm not going to go through all of them, but um, let's first let's just import that folder. Here we go. Um, and now we can then begin to, uh, to process the files. And um, we can see here, we now have all the images, all our 400 images selected. We can then begin to set up. We want to do a quality analysis um, and we want a quality cutoff. This is how big a percentage of the images we want. So what the program is going to do is we have, of course, one of the images here. Um, if we move in, so we can look at the moon, which should be somewhere in the center. There it is. What the program here does is it goes into every single frame that we've taken and then analyzes how sharp that is. And it will then order them by uh, by sharpness and it will take the lower 50% and put them away. Now, normally you might want more pictures than I have here, but just as for testing purposes, let's say we just want to, uh, to get rid of 50%. So I'm gonna click calculate and you can see now it's beginning to run through all the images, which will take some time. The quality analysis is now done. We can now see some of these pictures out here have been deselected and you could go through them manually if you wanted to. Um, and again, the difference is really, really small in this case. So how much we're gonna get out in the, in the end is, uh, we'll have to wait and see about that. But um, at least you can see some of them have been selected, some of them have been deselected. So um, let's go ahead and uh, let's accept that. So now we have our, uh, our sample of, uh, of the images. The next thing the program is going to do here is we're going to try and select some alignment points. It's manually selected some where there are some uh, distinct features. We can see we get a blow up of it here. Um, and we can go out and we can adjust these value, how big of a search rate it is. We, let's say we want to say, oh, that area there is, is, is that good? Um, we might want to move it around, but these are just basic alignment because the, you know, in each frame, the moon will be moving around and it will naturally be moving across the frame because we're taking it over a long period of time. And also if there's a little bit of, like, if the camera is shaking a little bit, um, it can be difficult. For instance, a crater like that would be a good alignment point to try and move one up there. Um, and all it does now is it goes through all the frames and it's trying to identify these points in every single frame 
that we now selected, our 200 and something. And then I try to stack them on top of each other, like align them with each other, so that we have the you know for each image how much they've been shifted. Um, so let's just start that process, which is also going to take a little bit of time. Okay, so the first alignment is done, and we can see here how the moon is actually moving across the frame, pretty in a pretty s s steady motion, um, and we can see how much it's shifted, and we actually managed to keep it quite close to the um, uh, to the center, so that's pretty good. Um, and again, there's a lot of process that you go through here, and then we move on to the next one. It's going to begin to to begin to calculate a first version of the average frame, and we're going to do, we're going to do a um, a second quality analysis, and then we're going to select more alignment points because not only can the moon be shifted around in the frame, it can also be distorted, like be stretched because of the way the uh, the atmosphere works, and it's also going to compensate for that. Um, as I said, it's not going to be a full tutorial on ABI stack. Um, I'll put a link for the, the software down below. There's plenty of tutorials up there and guides if you want to try it out for yourself. But I'm just going to go through this whole process and uh, we can have a look at the, at the finished results. Okay, we've come to the point now where we're actually done with all the stacking and alignment. And we now have this one frame. This is pretty much where we were at the beginning. We now begin to do the, what they know as wavelet sharpening. So basically they do a 4 year transform of the image. And we can then begin to sh to like highlight different areas on, of the picture. This was pretty much what we had before. So we take one of the lower wavelengths here, and we can then begin to to sharpen that up a bit. See that already helped a bit. We can maybe go a little bit further. There we go. So we're definitely beginning to get begin to see some uh, some more uh, highlighted areas here around the craters. And and you can sit and you can play around with these. Um, with these values as you see fit um, until you have something where you feel like you have uh, what you want. And finally here we have the finished image on the right and a unprocessed image straight from the camera on the left. And I think uh, it came out pretty well. We managed to uh, highlight some of the structure on the surface and uh, definitely managed to reduce a little bit of the blur that was. Um, so again, this is a, a process you can use to try and enhance your images. This of course works with uh, with other bodies uh, as well. Here is a few images uh, where I did a similar thing with, uh, with Jupiter. Um, of course, doing it with Jupiter you will need higher magnification, um, which also means more blur. But you can see still I was able to get some pretty decent results out of it. But anyway, I really hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a like down below. Remember to subscribe to the channel and until next time. I will see you guys in space.